Did Japan come from sex between two gods? When I first thought of doing a series on the history of Japan, I had a hard time deciding on where to start. It seems simple to just say, let's start at the beginning. But when is the beginning? With history, everything depends on what comes before it until the beginning of time. How do you explain a point in history without explaining what happened before that led to that point? It's like when you try to clean your room. Well, why don't I start by cleaning my desk? There's a bunch of stuff in there that I can put in my closet. Man, you can't. Your closet is totally full. Okay, then I'll just clean my closet first. There's a bunch of stuff in there that I can put in my drawers. Dude, your drawers are full of crap too. Fine, then I'll clean out my drawers first. There's a bunch of stuff in there that I can put in my desk. You just said you hadn't cleaned your desk yet. <laughs> Luckily, the Japanese creation myth gives us a good place to start. It is a legend about how the Japanese islands formed. It is a story that involves two gods, Izanagi and Izanami. Now, before we go too far, we need to take a little tangent. The word god is just a common English translation of the Japanese word kami. It's a crappy translation. Kami means something closer to spirit or phenomenon. 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 Amazing event. Shinto is Japan's oldest religion and is one of its two major religions, the other being Buddhism. Shinto is all about the worship of kami. A kami can be almost anything. If you can think of anything remotely interesting in life, there is probably a kami for it. For example, Amaterasu is the kami of the sun. The kami of rain controls the rain. People, after they die, eventually become kami. These ancestral kami hang around the family and they are revered and honored, especially in aristocratic families. Kami can also be interesting objects. For example, if there is a large, impressive-looking tree in a village, the people of the village may say, Hey, that's a big weird tree. It's probably a kami. Let's worship it and hope it protects our village. That Cheeto that looks like Harambe that sold for $100,000 on eBay? Probably a kami. A kami can be good or mischievous, and people may worship the mischievous ones to prevent them from doing bad things. Alright, now that we know what a kami is, back to our story about Izanagi and Izanami. There are other kami that were born before them, but they won't be in this video, because it's my video and I can do what I want. Shut up. Shut up. The myth of the creation of Japan. The entire world was covered by a large sea. The two kami, Izanagi and Izanami, brother and sister, thrust their spear into the water and swirled it around. They pulled the spear back up and some mud dropped down into the water, forming an island. The two kami descended to live on the island. They eventually fell in love and got married. Yes, they're brother and sister. No, they're not Lannisters. They gave birth to eight children, the eight main islands of Japan. Yeah, I know Japan's bigger than that, but in ancient times, the other islands were not part of Japan. This also answers the question asked in the beginning of the video. Yes, Japan did come from sex between two gods. Then, because birth control was not yet invented, they gave birth to many, many kami, representing the mountains, valleys, winds, rivers, and other natural features of Japan. However, when Izanami gave birth to the fire kami, she was critically burned and lay dying. As Izanagi knelt there, crying, his tears created even more kami, and Izanami also continued to create more until she died and went to the underworld. Izanagi was stricken with grief and traveled to the underworld to get his baby mama back. Izanami greeted him from the shadows and said, I'll beg the kami of the underworld to release me, but promise you won't look at me. And he said, Okay. But later he could not resist and lit a torch to see her face. He saw that his once beautiful wife was now a rotting corpse with maggots and foul creatures on her face. In a total dick move, Izanagi ran away from his dead wife because she was ugly. Izanami gave chase along with her crew of kami. Izanagi reached the land of the living and covered the entrance to the underworld with a big old boulder. His wife screamed from the other side, I will kill a thousand people every day if you leave. He yelled back, Then I will create 1,500 people every day. And that is why the story goes, Every day, 1,000 people die and 1,500 people are born. And those numbers hold true to this day. Back in the land of the living, Izanagi took a bath to purify himself of the dead. More kami emerged from his discarded clothing and his bath. 
Seriously, these two can't even sneeze without creating more kami. Imagine if it was like that for us. <gasps> ah, ah! Oh no, not again. Daddy? I can't. I can't do this anymore. I have 10 other kami in the house. I cannot afford anymore. Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you brought another kami into the world. It's irresponsible. Look, I did it for the tax credit at first, but it's getting ridiculous. So now you just kick me out into the streets? I'll show you! <laughs> ah! Achoo, achoo, achoo. <clears throat> when Izanagi washed his left eye, the kami of the sun was created, Amaterasu. When he washed his right eye, the kami of the moon was created, Tsukiyomi. When he washed his nose, the kami of the sea and storms was created, Susano. Amaterasu is the most important kami here, and it is said that all Japanese emperors descended from her. This is all very convenient to Japanese emperors, who used this belief in divine ancestry to legitimize their power. Alright guys, we'll stop here. Next episode, we will jump into the real world to see what Japan was like in prehistory. Who were the first people to settle in Japan? Were they aliens? Come back and find out.